Okay, so just going to demonstrate a couple of ways of creating ring shapes in J Wildfire. Um, first one's kind of simple, the other one's more advanced. Uh, but we can start off adding the transform. And one thing I like to do is just type in the first letter of the variation that I'm trying to get. And you can uh, bring up the variation directly from that. So in this case, it's an object mesh primitive um, with a small value like 0 0.01. And then add a primitive and change the shape from 1 to 0. And that gives you yeah, pretty straightforward. Um, to get more advanced with that, you can also add a pre-post circleize. And that allows you to create any insided shape. So like this is a square and then six-sided figure, pentagon, octagon, for example. So let's uh, also show you a different, more advanced way of doing things. Um, let's create a new from scratch. Let's see, add transform. And let's uh, make one using a cylinder. So I uh, create a cylinder with, let's say, a uh, value of 0 0.1. And we can add a pre blur for now. And set that to like 155. And we can link that to an EXP, which creates a ring. But let's say we wanted to create a pattern on the inside instead of the pre blur. One thing we can do is start adding another transform. And you'll have to unlink the linear because it's feeding back into the XP. And you have to unlink the cylinder because it's linking into the linear. And that allows you to have this pattern like so. And you'll want to, because uh, it's overlapping a little bit here, so you'll want to use post crop to crop out that area, or post smart crop. And let's give it a radius of, let's say, 0.9. And it's in a square shape, so to make it circle um, with a round strength of 1 and distortion of 0. And that should fix that. Now for the outer area, what you can do is just duplicate that transform and give it a negative radius. And let's increase the linear to larger than one. And there's still some overlap here, so let's change the radius and make the, the hole larger. And say 1.1. And let's make the inside a little bit more interesting. So let's go to transform three that I created before and add a pre recip to it. And let's make it do, uh, let's add a sin h power to it. So set that to value one. And we can remove the reciprocal to zero. Now to create an uh, inner pattern, we can remove the pre blur And it doesn't show up much at first, but let's rotate it by 90 degrees. And let's also create a, another ring shape to create an outline. And we can use the method that I was demonstrating earlier. So create an object mesh primitive, 0 0.01, and uh, add a primitive. To do f and change the shape from one to zero, and we can unlink that from the XP, and then make the primitive a little bit larger. So let's try to make it where it outlines the cylinder. So make the primitive wf uh, value of one point one. 
And to get the inner uh, outline, you can add a post mirror. And go down to where it says X and Y scale, and you can change that to, let's say, plane three. And do the same for the Y. And so you have an interesting pattern forming, and you have just this little section here that has a, a pattern on it. But let's say you want to, uh, let's say you want to use post point mirror or post point symmetry to make that go all the way around. So to do that, we can start with the cylinder and let's put a post smart crop on it. And let's make the radius uh, just for now to 0 0.25. And let's see if that, okay, you can kind of see the, uh, the outline there. So just bring it back to 0.25. And for post point symmetry, we'll want to add it to the EXP. It's going to be right in the circle. Um, make the center and uh, x and center y value to zero. And let's say we want 12 uh, duplicates of it. And let's shift the gradient a little bit. This is kind of dark. Now it's still got some. Like you can't see the line here, but there's some space between. There, you can see a little bit better in that area there. So to do it more precisely, let's, um, there's kind of a trick to it. So you can bring up your calculator, um, take pi and divide it by how many uh, pieces you want. So in this case, it's 12. And you get 0 0.2617. So go back to your cylinder and change the radius to 0 0.2617. And that makes it align perfectly there. And now you can, to remove the line, you can set crop mode by two. And there's also a little bit of mirroring. You can't see it too well, but that's one of the issues with this having the, the normal cylinder. And you can fix that by just changing it to cylinder two. And so you have an interesting design. Let's, uh, add, let's distribute the colors a bit. And let's see what else. I can kind of move it around, give it some interesting shapes, and you know, everything doesn't really interfere. So that's about it with the ring shape. Uh, I guess one more thing I can add is if you want to create this as a um, end sided shape, like I was showing before, if you add um, Prepose circularize to the EXP. Say four. And I think in this case you want to remove the pre part of it. Just unselect that. And you can also start adding the same uh, settings to these other linears in the object mesh. And that should allow you to. Um, make everything the same shape. Let's do add the circularize to that one also. And post circularize to this one also. 
And so you get a pretty cool looking polygonal or square or hexagonal shape, whatever you want to set it to. And you can move it around and shift it whichever way you want. But uh, yeah, that pretty much shows it. You can also clean up the edges a little bit better in this, but um, that should cover uh, all the topics I wanted to cover.